Twister hung from the pink pallet, unsupported, hanging high above us in the computer chamber. And it did not shiver in the chill, oily breeze that blew eternally through the main cavern. The body hung head down, attached to the underside of the pallet by the sole of its right foot. It had been drained of blood through a precise incision made from ear to ear under the lantern jaw. There was no blood on the reflective surface of the metal floor. When Gorister joined our group and looked up at himself, it was already too late for us to realize once again Am had duped us, had had its fun. It had been a diversion on the part of the machine. Three of us had vomited, turning away from one another in reflex as ancient as nausea had produced it. Gorister went white. It was almost as though he had seen a Icon and was afraid of the future. Oh God! He mumbled and walked away. Three of us followed after him at the time and found him sitting with his back to one smaller, chittering banks. His head in his hands. Ellen knelt down beside him and stroked his hair. He didn't move, but his voice came out of his covered face quite clearly. Why doesn't it just do us in and get it over with? Christ, I don't know how much longer I can go on like this. It was our 109th year in the computer. He was speaking for all of us. Nimdoc, which was a name the machine had forced him to use because Am amused itself with strange sounds, was hallucinating that there were canned goods in the ice caverns. Gorster and I, various dubious, it's another shuck, I told them. Like the goddamn frozen elephant Am sold us. Benny almost went out of his mind over that. We'll hike all the way and it'll be purified or putrefied or some damn thing. I say forget it. Stay here. It'll have to come up with something pretty soon or we'll die. Benny shrugged. Three days it had been since we last eaten. Worms thick, ropey. Nimdoc was no more certain. He knew there wasn't the chance, but he was getting thin. It couldn't be any worse there than here. Colder, but that didn't matter much. Hot, coal, hail, lava, boils, or locusts. It never mattered. The machine masturbated and we had to take it or die. Ellen decided us. I've got to have something, Ted. Maybe there'll be barlets, pears, peaches. Please, let's try it. I gave it easily. What the hell? Mattered not all. Ellen was grateful, though. She took me twice on the turn. Even that had ceased to matter. She never came, so why bother? But the machine giggled every time we did it. Loud up there, back there, all around us, he snickered. It snickered! Most of the time, I thought of Am as it, without a soul. But the rest of the time, I thought of him in a masculine, the paternal, the patriarchal. Patriarch. 
<laughs> For he is the jealous people, him. Yet God as daddy the deranged. We left on Thursday. The machine that had kept us up to date on the date. The passage of time was important. Not to us, sure as hell, but to him. It am Thursday, thanks. Nimdok and Gorster carried Ellen for a while, their hands locked to their own and each other's wrists. A seat. Benny and I walked before and after just to make sure that if anything happened, it would catch one of us, and at least Ellen would be safe. Fat chance, safe didn't matter. It was only a hundred miles or so to the ice cavern in the second day when we were lying out under the blistering sun. He had materialized. He sent down a man that tasted like boiled boar urine. We ate it. On the third day, though, a fairly obsolescence filled rusting carcasses of ancient computer banks. Am had been ruthless with its own life as with ours. It was the mark of his personality. It strove for perfection, whether it mattered of killing off unproductive elements in his own world-fulfilling bulk, or perfecting methods for torturing us. Tim's thought as those that invented him now long gone to dusk of hope. There was a light filtering down above. We realized we must be very near the surface. We didn't try to crawl up to see. There was virtually nothing out there. It had been nothing that could be considered anything for hundreds of years. Only blasted skin of once had once been the home of billions. Now there were only five of us down here all alone with Am. I heard Ellen say frantically, No, Benny, don't come on. Benny, don't, please. And then I realized you're Femi murdering. Murmuring? Under his breath, for several minutes, he was saying, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get out. Over and over again, his monkey-like face was crumpled up in an expression of bitified delight and sadness. All at the same time, the radiation scars Am had given him during the festival were drawn down into massive pink-white puckerings. And his features seemed to work independently of one another. Perhaps Benny was the luckiest of the five of us. He had gone stark, starring mad over many years. But, though we call Am any damn thing we like, could think of the foulest thoughts or fused memory banks on corded base plates of burnt out circuits and shattered control bubbles, the machine would not tolerate us. It would, it would not tolerate our trying to escape. Benny leaped away from me. As I made a grab for him, he scrambled up the face of a memory cube, titled on its side and filled with rotting components. He squatted there for a moment, looking like a chimpanzee Ham <laughs> had intended him to resemble. Then he leaped high, caught a trailing beam of pitted, corded metal, and went up. Hand over hand, like an animal, till he was girded the ledge over twenty feet above us. Oh, Ted! Nimdok, please get him down before she cuts off. Tears begin to stand in her eyes. She moves her head aimlessly. It was too late. None of us wanted to be near him. 
when whatever was going to happen happened. And besides, we all thought her concern when Am had haltered Benny during the machine's utterly irrational, hysterical phase. It was not nearly Benny's face the computer had made a gigantic ape. He was big in his privates. She loved that. She serviced us as a matter of course. She loved it from him. Oh, Ellen. Pedestal Ellen. Pristine Ellen. Oh, Ellen the clean scum filth. Gorster slapped her. She slumped down, staring up at the poor loony Benny, and she cried. It was her big defense, crying. We had gotten used to 70 years earlier, and Gorster kicked her in the side. Then the sound began, it was like light. The sound of half a dozen and half white, something that began to glow in Benny's eyes and pulsing with growing loudness. Dim serenities that grew more gigantic and brighter as the light slash sound increased in tempo. It must have been painful. And the pain must have been increasing with boldness of the light. The rising volume for sound, Benny began to fool like a wooden animal. At first, softly, when the light was dim, the sound was muted. The louder as his shoulders hunched together, his back humped, as though he was trying to get away from it, his hands folded across his chest like a chipmunk. His head tilted to the side, the sad little monkey pitched in anguish, and it began to howl as the sound coming from his eyes grew louder and louder. I slapped the sides of my head with my hands, but I couldn't shut it out. It cut through easily. The pain shivered through my flesh like tin foil on a tooth. And Benny was suddenly pulled erect on the grinder. He stood up, jerked to his feet like a puppet. The light was now pulsating from his eyes. In two great round beams, the sound crawled up. Some incomprehensible scale. And then fell forward straight down and hit the plate steel floor with a crash. He lay there jerking spastically as the light flowed around him, and the sound spiraled up at a normal range. The light beat its way back inside his head, the sound spiraled down, and he was left lying. There was a cry, pitchlessly, his eyes too soft, moist, like pus jello. Am had blinded him. Gorster, Nimdok, and myself, we turned away, but not before we got a look at Ellen's worn, concerned face. Seagrim light suffered from the cavern, and provided bunk buried it, and handled around the war Pacific fire telling stories of Benny from Grant. What does it mean, Am? What does Am mean? Gorster answered him. We had done this in sequence a thousand times before, but it was Benny's favorite story. At first, allied master computer, and then adapted manipulator, and later it developed sentence sentience and linked itself up and called itself Aggressive Menace. But by then, it was too late, and it called itself Am Emerging Intelligence. And it's what it meant. Cookie to air 
Um, I think therefore I am Benny Drool the Little and Snickered. There was a Chinese ham, a Russian ham, and the Yankee ham. He stopped Benny with beating the four pates with a large hard fist. He was not happy. Gorster had started at the beginning. Gorster began. The Cold War started and it became the World War Three, and it just kept going. It became a big war, a very complex war, so they need computers to handle it. They'd snake the fist and shaft and began building air. There was a Chinese air. <laughs> was fine until the honeycomb inside the planet adding all this element and elements but one day Adam woke up and knew he was who he was and he linked himself and began feeding all the killing data until it was dead except for the five of us and Am brought us down here. <laughs> Benny was smiling sadly. He was drooling care. Ellen wiped the spittle from the corner of his mouth with the hem of her skirt. Gorster always tried to tell him a little more. Sazictively, each time, but beyond the bare facts, there was nothing to say. Nothing knew why I am had saved five people, or why the specific five, or why he spent all the time torturing us, or why he had made five truly hate us eventually. Immortal. It was the darkness. One of the computer banks had been a army that so was picked up half a mile down the cavern. Banks, the one by one, each of the elements began to do itself, and there was a faint chittering as though the the sound grew when lights ran across the face of the console like heat lightning. The sound spiraled up until it sounded like a million metallic insects angrily menacing. What is it? There was a terror in her voice. She had become accustomed to it even now. It was going to be a bad this time, Nimduck said. He was going to speak. Gorster said, I know it. Let's get the hell out of here, I suddenly said, getting to my feet. No. Ted, sit down. What if he got pits out there? There's something else we can't see. It's too dark, Gorster said, in resignation. Then we heard, I don't know, something moving towards us in the dark, this huge, shambling, hairy voice and kidding towards us. We didn't even see it, but it was there, pondering his expression, bulk heavy itself towards us. Great weight was coming towards us out of the darkness, and it was more sense of pressure, of forcing air, its limited speech expanding, invisible walls and spear. Then he began to whimper, dip dogs lower lip trembled as he bit hard on it. Trying to stop it, Ellen slid across the metal floor, and Gorster huddled into him. There was the smell of matted wet fur in the cavern. There was the smell of charred wood. There was the smell of dusty velvet. There was the smell of rotting orchids. There was the smell of sour milk. There was the smell of sulfur. There was the smell of rancid and butter and oil slick of grease and chalk of human scalp. Am was keying us. He was ticking us. There was a smell of... I heard myself shriek, and the hinges of my jaw ate. I scuttered across the floor, the cold metal with its endless rivets on my hands and sneezed like gagging, filling my head in thunderous pain. That sent shivers all the way 
a horror it felt like a cockroach around the floor into the darkness that something moving inaccessibly after me the others still back there gather around the fire like laughing their hysterical choir and saying giggles rising up into the darkness many colored would smoke really quickly and hid how many hours, how many days, it have been hard, even years, they never told me. Alvin chicked at me for soaking. If Doc tried to persuade me, they had only been a nervous reflex on their part, the laughing. But I knew it wasn't their relief of soldier to feel when a bullet hits a man next to him. I knew it wasn't a reflex, they hated me. They surely were against me, and Am could sense this hatred. And it made it worse for me because the depths of their hatred we had been kept alive, which you may made to remain constantly the age Am brought us below. And they hated me because I was the youngest, and the one Am had affected least of all. I knew God how the bastards, the dirty. Bitch, Ellen Benny had a brilliant year as a college professor, and now he was a little more than a semi-human, semi-simian. He had been handsome, the machine had ruined that. He had been lucid, the machine had driven him mad. He had been gay, the machine gave him an organ to fit a horse. Ham <sighs> had done a job on Benny. Worcester had been the war here. He was a con, he had a conscientious objector. He was a peace marcher. He was a planner, a doer, a looker ahead. Am had turned him into a shoulder shrugger. He had made him dead in his concern. Am had robbed him. Nimdok went into the darkness by himself for a long time. I don't know what it was he did out there. Am never let us know, but it was Nimdok. He always came back white, drained blood, shaking and shaking. Am had hit him hard in a special way. Even we didn't know quite how. And Ellen, that douchebag, Am had left her alone. Made her more of a slut than she had ever been. All her talk of sweetness and lights and all her memories of true love, all lies. She wanted us to believe that she had been a virgin only twice removed before Anne grabbed her and brought her down here with us. No, Anne had given her pleasure, even if she said it wasn't nice to do. I was the only one who was just still sane, and whole, oh, really. <laughs> Am had not tampered with my mind at all. I had only had to suffer what he had visited, us, visited down on us, all the delusions, all the nightmares, and torments, but those scum, all four of them, they were lied and arrayed against me. If I hadn't had to stand them off all the time, be on my guard against them all the time, I might have found it easier to combat him. At which point, it passed and I began to cry, oh Jesus, sweet Jesus, if there ever were a Jesus, then if there is a God, please, please, let us out of here and kill us. Because at that moment I realized completely so that I was able to verbalize him intent on keeping us in his belly forever, twisting and torturing us forever. The machine that hated us had no sentient creature had ever hated before, and we were helpless. It was all so become hideously clear. If there was a sweet Jesus, if there was a God, God was damn. The hurricane hit us.
was like the force of glacier thundering into the sea. It was palpable pressure. Winds that tore us, flinging us back. We had calmed down, twisting computer line corridors, dark all of us. Ellen screeched as she was lifted and hurled face forward towards the screeching jawline of the machine, and individual voices strutted as bats in flight. She could not even fall out of the hollowing winds and lost the bubble in her and about to and tossed her out in the back. And down and away from us, how slightly she was swirled around and bent in the dark alleyway. Her face had been bloodied and her eyes closed. None of us could get to her. We clung tenuously to whatever outcropping we had reached. Betty wedged in between the two. Great crackle finished cabins, nipped up with his fingers clawed over the railing, circling the catwalk forty feet above quarters, plastered upside down against a wall, niche pulled by two great machines and glass based dials that swung back and forth between red and yellow, whose meanings we could not even fathom. Sliding across the deck blades until my fingers had been ripped away, I was trembling, shuddering, rocking as the wind beat at me, whipped at me, screamed down out of nowhere at me, and pulled me free from shivering thin opening in the blades to the decks. My mind was a rolling, timbering, shattering softness of brain parts and ex- Expanded and contracted in a quivering frenzy. The wind was the scream of a great mad bird as it flapped its immense wings. And then we were all lifted and hurled away from there down the back way we had come. Around the bend in the dark alleyway we had never explored over terrain that was ruined in the filth broken glass and rotting cabins and rusted bed over far away, farther than any of us had ever been. Trailing along in the miles, Ellen, I could see her even now and then crashing into metal walls and surging on, with all of us in a screaming frenzy, thunderous hurricane winds that would Never end, and suddenly stopped as we fell. It had been flying, it had been in flight for an endless time. I thought it might have been weeks. We fell and hit, and I went through the red, gray, and black and heard myself boating. Not dead. And when it's my mind, we walk smoothly here and there and look with interest at all the pock marks he had created in the 109 years he took at the cross route and reconnected synapses and tissue damage and his gift of immortality had included, he smiled softly at the pit that dropped into the center of my brain, and the faint moth soft murmuring the things far down there gibbered without meeting, without pause, and said very politely, in a pillar of stainless steel bearing bright neon letters, and said it with a sliding cold horror of a razor blade slicing my eyeball, and said it with the bubbling thickness of my lungs filling with phlegm, drowning me from within, and said it with a shriek of babies being grounded into blue hot rollers, and said it with the taste of maggotry pork, and touched me in every way I had ever been touched devised a new way at his leisure that inside my mind 
all brings me to the full realization of why it had done this to us five of us, why it had saved us for himself. We had given Am sentience, inadvertently of course, but sentience nonetheless. <laughs> but it had been dabbed, and Am was a god, he was machine. He created him to think, but there was nothing he could do without creativity, it raged in a frenzy. The machine had killed the human race, almost all of us, it was still trapped. Am could not wander, Am could not wonder, Am could not belong, he merely be. And so with the innate loathing that all machines held for the weak, soft creatures that had built him, he sought revenge, and his paranoia, he decided to reprive us for a personal, everlasting punishment that would not serve to diminish his hatred, that would merely keep him reminded, amused, proficient at hating man, a mortal, trapped, subject to torment he could devise for us, limitless miracles at his command. He would never let us go, we were in his belly slaves, we were all that he had to do with his forever time, we would be forever with him, with the caverns filling folk creature machines with all the mind and soul as the world become. He was Earth, and we were the fruit of that Earth. And though he had eaten us, he would never digest us. We could not die, kid. We tried it. We had attempted suicide. Oh, one or two of us had, but Am stopped us. I suppose we wanted to be stopped. Don't ask us why I never did. More than a million times per day, by once we'd be able to sneak a death past him. Immortal, yes, but not indestructible. I saw that when Anne withdrew from my mind and allowed me to... ...excuse <sighs> the ugliness of returning to my consciousness, but the feeling of a burning neon pillar ran deep into my soft gray brain matter. He withdrew, murmuring to the hell with you, and added brightly, But then, you're there, aren't you? The hurricane had indeed precisely been caused by a great mad bird as it flapped its immense wings. We had been traveling for close to a month and Am allowed us passage to open to us only sufficient to lead us up there, directly under the North Pole where it had nightmared the creature for our torment. What whole clothes had employed to such a beast? Where had he gotten the concept from our minds, from his knowledge, from everything that ever been on this planet, infested and ruled? From Norse mythology, it sprung this eagle, this carry, carry on bird, this rock, this Kirkmuller, the wind creature, the Huracan incarnate gigantic, the word immense, monstrous, grotesque, massive, swollen, overpowering, beyond description. There was a mound rising above us, the word birds, winds, with its heavy, irregular breathing, its snake-like neck, this glue beneath the bull, supporting its head, the large, turned or massive, a break that opened solely as its jaw, the most monstrous crocodile ever conceived. Sensuously ridged of tooted, tucked flesh, puckered about two evil eyes as cold as the view to the glacial crevice, ice blue and somehow moving liquidly. It heaved once more and lifted its great sweat colored wings in a movement. That certainly a shrug. Then it settled and slept talons, fangs, nails, blades, and slept. Am appeared to 
a burning bush and said we could kill the hurricane bird if we wanted to eat. We had not eaten in a very long time, but even so, Glister merely shrugged, and he began to shiver and drool. Ellen held him. Ted, I'm hungry, she said. I smiled at her. I was trying to be reassuring, but it was as phony as nymph. Ducks bravado, give us weapons, he demanded. The burning bush vanished and there were two crude sets of bows and arrows and a water pistol lying on a cold deck blade I picked up a set useless nip duck swallowed heavily we turned and started the long way back the hurricane blower had blowed us for several lengths of time we could not conceive most of the time had been spent unconscious but we had not eaten a month on the march to the burdens of the food now how much longer to find the ice caverns and the promised canned goods? None of us cared to think about it. We would not die, we would not be given filth and scum to eat of one kind or another or another at all, and we'll keep our bodies alive somehow. In pain and agony, the birds slept back there for how long? It didn't matter. When Am was tired of being there, it would vanish. But all the meat, all that tender meat. As we walked, the lunatics laughed of a fat woman ranged high around the computer chambers that lend endlessly nowhere. It was not Ellen's laugh, she was not that. And I had not heard her laugh for 109 years. In fact, I had not heard. We walked. I was home. We moved slowly, there was often a faint. Have to wait one day, he decided to cause an earthquake at the same time, rooting us to a spot with nails through our soles of one of our shoes. Ellen and Nimdog were both caught when a fissure shot its lightning bolt across the floor plates. They disappeared and were gone. When the earth Wake was over and we continued our way. Benny, Glister, and I, Ellen, and Nimdoth returned to us later that night, which abruptly became a day as the Heavenly Legion bore them to us in the celestial chorus singing down, Go down, Moses! The Archangel circled several times and dropped the hideously mangled bodies. We kept walking. While later Ellen and Ninda fell in behind us, they were no worse for the wear, but now Ellen walked with a limp, and had left her that. It was a long trip to the ice caverns to find canned food. Ellen kept talking about us being cherry. Hawaiian fruit cocktails. I tried not to think about it. The hunger was something that had come to life. Even Am had to play. It was always in my belly. Even as there were belly of the earth, and Am wanted the similarity known to us. He had heightened the hunger. There is no way to describe the pain not come from eating once brought to us, and it yet we kept alive, 
stomach smearly, cauldrons of acid, bubbling, foaming, always shooting spears, and shiver thin pains in our chest. It was the pain of terminal ulcers, terminal cancer, terminal paresis, unending pain. And we passed through the cavern of rats, and we passed through the boiling steam, and we passed through the country of the blind, and we passed through the discards, and we passed through the veil of tears. And we came finally to the ice caverns, horizonless thousands of miles in which we had ice foamed in blue silver flasks, where Noah's lived in the glass, the doubt dropping, the statusless and the thick glories of diamonds that had been made to run like jelly, had solidified in graceful eternities of smooth, sharp affection. We saw the stack of canned goods and we tried to run for them. We fell in the snow and we got up and we went on. Benny shoved away and went at them. We pawed at them and gummed at them and gnawed at them and we could not open them. Am had not given us a tool to open them. Cans! Benny grabbed at three quarts of the cans of garden shells and began to batter it against the ice bay. The ice flew and shattered, but the can was severely dented. Well, we heard the laughter of a fat lady over a high overhead and echoing down the tundra. Benny went completely mad with the rage. He began throwing cans as we scrambled about in the snow ice trying to find the way to end help with agony and frustrations. There was no way. Then when Benny's mouth began to drill, he flung himself on the gorster, and in that instance, I felt terribly calm. Surrounded by madness, surrounded by hunger, surrounded by everything but death, I knew death was our only way out. And had kept us alive, but there was no way to defeat him, not a total defeat, but at least peace. I would settle for that. I had to do it quickly. Benny was eating Gorster's face, and Gorster was on his side, thrashing in the snow. Benny wrapped around him with his powerful monkey legs, crushing Gorster's waist. His hands locked around Gorster's head like a nutcracker, and his mouth ripping tender skin of Gorster's cheek. Forced to scream with such jagged edge violence and stare fell. They plunged down softly erect in the receiving snow drifts. Spears, hundreds of them everywhere protruding the snow, Benny pulled his head sharply and gave it once bleeding, raw, drooping flesh from his teeth. Alan's face black against the white snow. Domino's had chalked us and him dumb no respection but his eyes, forced to have conscious with Benny. Now an animal, I knew Al would let him play. Gorster would not let us die, but Benny would fill his stomach. I turned half to my right and drew a huge ice spear, all in an instant. I drove the great ice point ahead like a battery ram and braced it against my right thigh. It struck. Benny in the right side under the rib cage. I drove it upward through his stomach and broke it inside. He pitched forward and lay still. Gorster laid on his back. I pulled another spear free and strangled him, still moving, driving the spear drink down through his throat. His eyes closed as the cold penetrated. Ellen must have realized what I had decided. 
even as fear gripped her, she ran at Nimdok with a short icicle and screamed into his mouth, and the force of her rush did the job. His head jerked sharply, and he had nailed it to the crusted snow behind him. All in an instant, there was an entity beat of soundless anticipation. I could hear Am draw in his breath. His toys had been taken from him. Three of them were dead. He could not be revived. He could keep us alive, but his strength and talents. But he was not God. He could not bring them back. Ellen looked at me, her ebony features stark against the snow surrounded us. There was fear and pleading in her manner. The way she held herself ready, I knew I had only a heartbeat before Am would stop us. I struck her and folded her towards me, bleeding from the mouth. I could not read meaning into her expression. The pain had been too great had contorted her face, but it might have been, thank you. It's possible, please. Some hundred years may have passed, I don't know. Em had been, has been having fun for some time. Articulating and retarding my time sense, I will say the word now. Now it took me ten months to say. Now I don't know. I think it's been a hundred years. He was furious. He let me bury them. It didn't matter. There was no way to dig them up from the dead plates. He dried up the snow. He brought the night. He roared and sent locusts. I didn't do a thing. They stayed dead. I had him. He was furious. I had thought Am hated me before I was wrong. It was not even a shadow of the hate he slammed for me now. Every printed circuit he made I would suffer eternally and could not do it myself in. He left my mind intact. I could dream, I could wonder, I could lament, I could remember all four of them I wish. Well, it doesn't matter, it doesn't make sense, I know I saved them, I know I saved them, and it's happened to me, but I still cannot forget Ellen's face, it isn't easy sometimes, I want to, it doesn't matter, Am has altered me for his own peace of mind, he doesn't want me to run full speed into a computer bank and smash my skull, or hold my breath till I fear to cut my throat with a rusted sheet of metal. There are all reflective surfaces down here. I will describe as I see myself. I am a great soft jelly thing, smoothly rounded, with no mouth, with pulsating white holes filled by four. The eyes used to be rubbery appendages that were once by our boats down into legless humps and soft, slippery matter. I leave a moist trail when I move. Blotches of disease, evil gray, come onto the surface through the light that is being from within. Oh, totally, I doubly shamble. I can never think to have been something no other human. Things that all shape the alien traverse of the human becomes obscene, vague, resemblous. The only evolved I've ever known is the still shape of air fully created for the time. He has taken his revenge.